right, we're going to go ahead and, and get started this morning with some reflection. And you were asked just to bring back a reflection on a task that you completed for second grade, either with the ARG materials or something with your kids that you noticed from the foundational gaps we saw in unit one assessments. And then third grade, you guys were asked to bring back something that you did with your bubble kids. You know, what was your focus? And then maybe what even are your next steps if you've gotten that far yet? So we'll start with second grade. Just somebody start and reflect on what you guys brought back. Um, I do a scene that most, uh, several of my missed the, the ED with the three sounds that it makes with the past tense. So we worked on that. We did a board sort. We played a, a baseball game with all of the codable words with it. And it was taught in lesson 19. But I still have four who do not get it. It's all the ed. So we're going back and we're focusing. I've made it then a chart that says, try this sound first. If it doesn't sound right, go to this sound. And then the third sound in the correct order that they work. Mm -hmm. I like that you've already thought about the chart. That'll be a good support for the ones that still don't have it. Now, do you come back to that later in a lesson, you think? Um, no, we do not. Okay, and I, so. I looked ahead, and there's a few that have a few ED words, but not a whole lesson anywhere. Okay, so that's something we might want to think about in, in some next steps. Casey, what about you? Uh, we're practicing a soft C and J. Okay. And then we <coughs> have been like saying them, and then we there's a game in our foundational skills. You play with a ruler and you put it on the board, and they have to find it and pick it out. And then we've been circling them where there are in words. And there's I have three that are still struggling, but the rest of them are really picking it up. Okay, awesome, awesome. I like that you went ahead and pulled those games in. That'll be good support for those ones that are still struggling. So, Kayla, what about you? Um, I did a task with my bubble kids I brought back. Um, it focused on vocabulary and language because that's something I'm noticing. And then on their Ames web, their vocabulary score um, was lower. So, um, and it's three that I really thought, you know, they try really hard in class. So we did a, um, a text with questions based on vocabulary and language. And then they actually had to do some writing at the end of it. So. We kind of talked about they've still got we've still got work to do i'm going to try to do one of these with them a week for a while and then see if they're better on getting more answers right on their own because like yesterday they did it then we talked about it so they would mark what they got wrong and um some of the things like we talked about working backwards when you get asked for the the discussion questions or the writing prompt mm -hmm. to see what it's actually asking you to kind of break it down for Cause like one of them, you know, he read this one. It's kind of a long prompt, and then he was he asked me. He said, "What do they actually want me to write about, Miss Kayla?" So then we worked backwards and underlined the last sentence, which was actually what it was asking him. And I said, "I know that was a lot for them just to, yeah, you know." Yeah. So we worked on that, and um, then with the vocabulary part of it, context clues made them circle the words around the one they didn't know, and you know, underlining that sentence is in. And then go into the question and, you know, okay. going back to the text before they answer the question. Okay, so it sounds like you are working on strategies, strategies to try to help them yes. when they're, you know, get to this stuff, which will later help them on the TN ready. Yes, that's great. All right, Mr. Alex. Uh, we had our um, first focusing task question where they had to uh, put together an actual uh, paragraph. And um, so most of them did really good with just having the parts. Um, and what have you, but the, um, the higher kids, um, they're able to kind of put it all together and get their thoughts down on paper and it's organized. Uh, whereas the middle and the, some of those bubble kids, they've got their parts, um, but it's the explanation and really uh, kind of having, putting together a complete coherent paragraph that they're still struggling with. And so uh, we've got to work some more on, you know, when you put that piece of evidence, they did a really good job of pulling them out, but their explanation might be, uh, just simply because the poem said so or because the book said so and uh, <laughs> recognizing that they've got to go deeper uh, with their thinking mm -hmm. um, but I will say that overall where these kids are coming in this year is much further ahead than where last year's group was because of you know obviously what they did in second grade and so the idea of that topic sentence you know was not foreign to them and then the idea of you know pulling out evidence that's you know straight from the book uh, you know, was pretty easy for them, but you know, just kind of 
taking that next step into being able to explain it and explain it at a little bit deeper level is uh, kind of where we're going to head next with it. But all, all in all, I was pretty pleased with what they did. And then obviously the grammar and stuff like that. We need to okay. continue so, to And hopefully today we'll kind of look at some of that and um, determine some some groups maybe that we can pull for, for that and stuff. So Yeah, we've yeah, kind of decided awesome. to work on grammar as a focus with this bunch that we've yeah. got right now. All right, that's Let's look at our norms today. Um, everything kind of, you know, the same, begin to end on time, necessary material, stay on task, and work in conversation. So if there's anything that you want to put in the parking lot, jot it down, post it note, and we'll get to it before uh, you leave today. Um, our meeting goal today is to begin to establish expectations for small group, which is going to look different in both, you know, second grade to third grade. But um, our need is going to be how can we implement routines and procedures to ready students for small group and instruct in instruction and what routines need to be in place beforehand. Um, so I, we have a table that I gave you that is the looks like, sounds like, and feels like. So we're just going to think of this as if somebody walks into my room or me as the teacher, um, what does that look like? For me as a teacher, what does it look like? What am I doing in small group? So let's just think about that and kind of get some ideas down on paper. What, is, what does that look like? What's the teacher doing in small group? So somebody share out some ideas. Listening to the kids reading. Okay, listening to kids reading. What else am I the teacher doing? I think the teacher's leading That's what a group. Okay, yeah. leading a group. I put like over at my table with okay. three to four kids. Awesome. What about um, materials? What does that look like for the teacher? You need to like have some kind of small manipulative based on whatever skill. Okay. So it could be like letter cards or tiles or something. So accessible manipulatives, accessible yes. materials. What about sounds like for the teacher? So what is the te what what if somebody walks into the room, what are they hearing the teacher do? Prompting questions. Okay, prompting. What else? Leading. I mean you could be a work at, you know, reteaching a skill. Okay, reteaching. What do you think the experience for the teacher is? What does it feel like? Well, there was, a, <laughs> there was a need to be there. So like you've looked at data, you say experience, so yeah. what you're going to mean? Yeah, so it feels like um, use of data for support. And if we're, you know, the teacher probably feels supportive, right? So that would be something we could add in there for that support with data. Um, so let's think about it in the student's perspective. What does it look like for them? What are they doing? What does it look like for students? What are they doing? They're using the manipulatives. Okay, using materials. What kind of materials? Let's expand on that a little bit. Could be a Chromebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Or print materials. Okay, where might those print materials come from? The ARG. Okay, ARG materials. Decodables. <coughs> Grade one. Decodables. Anything else? I mean, like, you could be using those wit and wisdom fluency passages and. Fluency passages. Or a text set, like I was doing mm -hmm. with the questions. And keep that in mind today, text sets. That's that, something to go with. that makes me remember, Stacey, on the looks like for the teacher, we're probably taking anecdotal notes because yes. when we're talking about the decodables or the text sets, I heard mm -hmm. Kayla say. I marked my paper up as yeah. I yeah, worked with them, yeah. Kind of noting what they were doing yes. as I watched them. What are the students? sound like 
What are, what should we be hearing them do? They could be quiet, or they could be talking to the group, the small group. So, uh, appropriate voice. Yeah. Tone. What else? At some point, they better be reading. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reading, of course. It could be decoding. Mm hmm. Working on some decoding. We can hear that. What do you think it should feel like? What sort of students feel like? I think that when you work with kids, and you, a lot of times they feel like it's special attention. Okay. Get, you know. So. Like I think if you make it know like I'm uh, pulling you to help you on this, you know, I think it makes them feel special. Okay. You should feel success and then yes. you'd hope that you're also maybe have the opportunity to, some of them should feel challenged, you know, you usually always think about the lower kids, so those mm -hmm. that need help, but you also have the opportunity for your higher kids to push them and challenge them in a small group. All right, yeah, challenge. Good. I think we've got some great ideas down to sort of lead us into what we're doing today. So as we move on, let's look at that next slide because we're going to dig deeper into small group instruction and kind of the look for that we have established. So if you click on that, it'll bring up a document and it's also attached to your handout too if you want to look at the hard copy. The looks for this Yes. Way. So if you'd rather look at the hard copy. It says I need mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. We can push request. Yeah, you. Yeah, it should work if you do that. Okay. Hard copy it is. <laughs> yeah. So just take a minute to look over that. Oh, see if you notice. Know, just notice and wonder about anything. Um, maybe even something you saw in connection to what we wrote down on our small group look like, sound like, and feel like. Notice Wonders Connections. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Are we waiting a minute? Go ahead. No, go ahead. On the, it says decodable practice should be happening. Now, I don't have... Right. Or so for you guys, it, we'll talk that, about that part's little, different. Yeah, okay, it, that's it might look a little bit different. Okay. And I'm going to give you some more time and a little bit to look over it, especially second grade. So, when we took a survey um, a couple weeks ago about small group instruction, and I took it and I sort of looked at the three top needs that were selected by teachers. The top were culture and management, planning, and small group. So, I thought today we would just attack one of those, culture and management. Um, so, when you look at, it's on slide seven, I pulled out those look fors and I thought, you know, what look fors match culture and management? Well, number two was materials accessible for students, not with the teacher. That has a little bit to do with culture and management. We've got to have materials accessible for them to keep, you know, them on task. And then number seven, partner read routines. I've got to have those in place for students to stay on task when they're with partners. So for third grade, that's going to look a little bit different because like you said, you guys may not be using the codables. It may be. You know, we've got G Mr. Alex has got the geodes, but then we may also, somebody may be using text sets, they may be using writing tasks, they may be doing reading and citing evidence. So your small groups, they may be working on some different things. Um, so that's my third grade. I'm going to get you started in what you're working on today while you guys visit that look for document a little bit more, looking for notice, wonders, and connections to what we wrote down on our table. So for you guys, I... Um, thought that you could look at the lesson nine written with some tasks that you brought and just sort of use our data protocol that we have put into place to see it. So we're just going to look for some trends that we noticed, which you know you'd already mentioned some that you had found. What, what are you wondering in the name it part? And then the do it part, we're going to think about what materials could we use. Maybe it's from the ARG or um, 
you know, if it's foundational skills based, or is it something that I can look at the rubric, can I look at my focusing question task rubric, um, look for connections if it was conventions like grammar and stuff like that, maybe we can pull that out. Maybe we could pick one on the rubric to focus on in small group. Um, so I posted those on here. Um, I emailed you guys the rubric because the link, when you click on it, you have to sign into Wit and Wisdom. So if you okay. don't know your Wit and Wisdom password right off the top of your head yeah. or your great minds, you can just look at the email I sent and has it attached to. So I'm going to let you guys get started on that while I work with them. Uh, something else I put on here is, you know, if it is conventions and grammar and things like that, maybe we're going to head to deep dives and see if there's something that you're going to revisit. So if something okay. comes out, you know, is it a deep dive that we're going to revisit later? All right, you guys get on that. All right, now, second grade, let me get you guys. So if we go back up to the slide that began with management, I'm going to show you kind of, I had pulled the unit overview. Of course, this is first grade. But what I did was I just looked for, since I need to dis establish like a partner read routine, well, I need to look and see, okay, well, when are we partner reading that I can establish these routines for students? So in mine, it was less than 19, there's a partner reading. So I know on that day, I'm going to make sure that I'm very explicit with my expectation for my partner reading, um, as well as the comprehension check. So on that day, they're also answering this comprehension yeah, piece, that's which is like. in the look for. So there's a comprehension check that was on that sheet. Thanks. Thanks. Well, that um, so I want to take, there. when I'm modeling this that day, I want to model it with students. I want to do a think aloud with students. So like if I was doing number one, who went on top of the path at the pond? Well, oh, you're looking for a person because it says who, boys and girls. So I know that I've got to start this and I want to respond to the question with a sentence. So whoever, Beth, went on top of a path at the pond. So I want to write that down because I, that's what I expect from students every time. And then I can hang this up in the room as an exemplar so that when they are doing a comprehension check, they know that there should look something like that every time. So um, then I thought, okay, the next, one of the other look fors was partner reading. Well, on that day, I'm going to make sure that I have every protocol in place that I expect partners to do when they are reading together. Because when I'm at that group with, you know, at the table, and everybody else right now is with their partners reading, and I'm going to use this day to practice those expectations. You know, am I going to have them taking turns? How many times are they going to read it? Um, I'm going to designate a space for them. Elbow to elbow, knee to knee. I'm going to make sure that's done that day. Um, then I'm going to look for small group reading time. This is when I'm going to model early signature work. Okay, because you're always going to have those kids that are finishing early. Now, well, where do I find materials for those kids to do? Well, in the supplemental part, which on, our, on first grade, it was like on the very end of one of the lessons, chaining. So I need to model for kids what I expect. One kid is given the word, the other kid's chaining on the board then they can switch jobs. But all of that has to be modeled beforehand. Um, another supplemental material I could use is the phrases and sentences part. They could be highlighting the tricky words, so that's something else I could add in there, especially if it's kids that are having trouble with tricky words. And I would put this, this is what I yeah, use to kind of guide me through that, is students not with the teacher plan. <laughs> so, uh, I know I named it real fancy, right? Um, and that's also, connected on that slide so you can use this plan to go through your lessons like I did look for okay when are they doing a comprehension check what are my expectations what tasks will they not will they do when they're not with the teacher how will they partner read how will that be possible or is it going to be the same for everybody um, how many times are they going to read so this is all the things I'm thinking about as I'm preparing for this model. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now so I'm glad I'm let you look at this group's a little more behind um, than what I did for you first have grade. That's upcoming. They're more behind than last year's. And kind of outdo the outline. 
So here's an attachment to your, um, your yeah, yeah, well, yes. So that you have a model of what I'm Which the this well, was pretty you? hard, but I wanted it to have words in it that they didn't know, so that we so I had pre pulled a few words. So really though, for those three, the the text was pretty hard, but I did want it to have some words in it they didn't know. This and actually had two grade. discussion questions too. That so that was and these are these are tough. I mean honestly, well I feel like this group. They're, they're ability to think with some of the hard stuff is above what last year's was. Last year's group can read. Well, that's better. Yeah, I'm going to say this group is better than just well, reading the words. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, walking around, so, monitoring. And I actually, during summer um, school, got to do second you know, grade a couple can. days and uh, taught okay, foundations for what a lesson because we didn't have it. So, I've, you know, the kids and actually locked it. That would also be the day that I'll talk about how many times do they read it. So yeah, maybe we did. What are my early finishers doing? Not having trouble reading. Like I, it's a, I think it's where they and then what is got the quarantined in that first like? grade year. So everything is on yeah. this. Like those questions, I'm sets and three questions or whatever, and some of them aren't that. haven't been mm -hmm. terribly tough. So but like, when they read the question, they're not even reading the question, 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 question okay. right, or they're not reading the passage like correctly, and so they're and, and I keep going back to okay, because I feel like they didn't this group has got to, they're going to have to go in the text and find the answer where it's taking them so long. So I've been there, really. I think that's why they're missing the questions. That way they respond. So I think if I can get them to go back and literally highlight or underline the answer. Which, because yeah. when you take that long to read yeah. something, so you like lose here's supplemental the, yeah. you know, sentences and phrases. I think that's why they're missing so many of these questions. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You yeah. have yeah. good yeah. skills. Yeah. Like you through them writing, can you tell what skills they're having trouble with? Like, I mean, you're saying that they're having trouble like decoding words. Can you tell some skills that they're like the whole group's lacking? Or well, is there patterns? We gave a sight word test. But we've done that. So a lot of it's those multisyllabic mm -hmm. words yeah, or the ones so where it can be yeah. um, the short vowel sound or the long vowel sound and not always picking up like if they were reading something just the other day I had them called it up and like the word was live but Same. there's some out of live volcano but more than half of them wrote it, read it as live and didn't recognize that that wasn't right to go back and self-correct and it's little things like that that there's a, I've noticed there's a trend with them that details and specifics they kind of are having trouble with because like you talked about going in and underline like I, I had we worked on that and then we did it okay. several together but I then when they went and did it on their own you, so know, it's, you know it's little things like that that build in better habits and this recognition is, that, <laughs> is um, needed. That book I just got from Helen Rim has has paragraphs in it that are already done that they we could make them go and say you highlight the topics in it, highlight the detail, highlight the. That way they do so focus on the more. Right. 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 I think that would help right. them right. on, because right. right. I agree yeah. this group knows the this lingo one. of the writing, well. oh, so okay. it's, it's not like we're right. starting right. off scratch, right. which is awesome, mm -hmm. but like yeah. doing yeah. an explanation of their details, they're kind of they're not they can't take it to that next step yet. So I think maybe them seeing some paragraphs that are done. And them no, highlighting the parts, yeah, because it's well, hard to explain almost what you're wanting them to do without just showing them paragraphs. I suppose those and saying you pick out the part, yeah, because I but think that would help a lot of the see them. She put them on paper so my, and they my stepsister teaches said, at Highland Rim, and they have that this grammar yeah. program, and it had, and I got a book from her. This doesn't have extra words, and it has paragraphs in it that are already done. That they could highlight the parts, and I think that this group is going to need some of that. So like and hopefully, then they can do it because they are farther with the writing where they mm -hmm. did, you know, so writing. You're saying your next steps may be to put some good examples, maybe yeah, some non examples, yeah, have them highlighting the parts, 
And then as far as their reading, we were talking about Miss Tammy going into the ARG because like yeah. this group, we're saying they're thinking where they did went wisdom, you know, their thinking's better than what we started with last year, but they're reading probably where they missed, where they got quarantined right. in first grade. Yeah. They're behind there. So kind of making up with some of that because when you're taking that long to read something, then you're mm -hmm. not doing great on the questions. Well, you know, so. And they're probably having trouble with some decoding, so they're not calling right. in as well. Like he said, they, they read the word mm -hmm. live or live and, or opposite of that, I guess. And they didn't self-correct when they got to the end of the sentence to realize, well, that didn't make sense. So looking at this second grade ARG guy, like what jumps out to me right away, it says using chunking to, to decode multi-syllable words starts on page 35. Mm -hmm. So I heard you say multi-syllabic is maybe the place to start. So generally you might go to 35 in the ARG guide and see what opportunities, which I'll go there and look. But it does like explicitly name that out as an intervention. So that might be a place you can go what it looks like. to look. It's like even in math, they're constantly having to have help just reading like the, the questions and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas didn't have that last year no. necessarily been asking that very often. Could yeah. you? I'm having to read questions more which you know, first still first month or two months school, but I'm reading questions more than I did. So I'm just curious I know that we had the second yes. grade end of year assessments. Were we able to look at them to know what their errors were? to pick that up, like I know our data, like it was hard for us at the end of the year because we didn't have everything, but could you tell anything? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of those, like diphthongs and stuff like that seemed to be what really stood out. I know like Casey had on hers written what they had struggled with, and there was a lot with the A, U, I, E, those types of things. And then yeah, with um, Courtney, you can see some of the little, little specific things on the actual assessment or whatnot, so, but. Um, there is a word reading assessment. Okay, so then what's the next lesson? Lesson four? I don't know. Since you've really already got one from the end of the year, I don't know if you need to give another one, but there may be, some, you may not even need the whole thing, but there may be some of these, like, and what's that? Maybe you could, could, it's in the ARG. ARG. So page. No, I, 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 printed, ARG. I printed that out. Is that from the, is that the, the end of the writing. year one? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I printed that out with the, the words in isolation and then the um, actual yes. thing where you can assess on to see if yeah. they're getting the difference on these and stuff like that. I know. I just but, them right I mean, so that might give you a better idea of where they are. In the moment, I don't know. And then yeah. sometimes it is a high level, especially those ones that are struggling. Is with there it. a sentence I, reading one with that, reading or is it just words in isolation? No, I don't really see the really sentence one. I'm yeah. only seeing words in because isolation, know, but that doesn't mean it's not in there. I mean, this is just a big, no. <laughs> but that's, that's definitely something that we can look for. Some sentences. I feel like for some of them, that's where they start faltering. Even if it's not in here, we could pull maybe in second grade's last unit. They do have like phrases and sentences in the supplemental materials. So even if it's not in here, we could pull them from there. So I'll look that. Um, I'll look that up for you guys and see. And on, on this page 35, it highlights that in order to successfully chunk and decode multi-syllables, that you really need to have six skills and it names out closed syllables, the magic E, vowel mm -hmm. digraphs, are controlled and open syllables. So it lists those there. And then if you go within this ARG guide, I think it will like give you just activities that you can plan that are like closed syllables. So like going off what you said, you may want to go a little bit deeper and think, do they have these six? You know what I'm saying when you're thinking about multi-syllables. So even if you just focused on like kind of rechecking those six things, that would give you a little bit more narrow of what you, what you can like pinpoint. Yeah. Okay. So, how often, how long are we thinking for the small group stuff we're wanting to implement? 
Well, and you know, we don't want implementation to be overwhelming, but, um, and for you guys, you don't necessarily have like a foundation's time that you can tack on for right. your small group. Um, so there might be some days that if your deep dive in wit and wisdom is shorter, you might could do some small groups on those days. And, you know, I think even with them, it's going to differ a little bit until we kind of get our feet under us and get used to having small groups more often and make sure we're following um, when it says small group that we're, we're implementing it and doing it, then, you know, it's not every day. It's for them, I think it's like mostly three days a week. You know, so even if you could implement that now and focus on, hey, I'm this week I'm going to try for this many days. I'm going to try to meet with this many groups. You know, so there's not like a set number yet. Especially in third grade. Right. I think you need to look at your schedule and like what is doable for your schedule. Yeah. And you're meeting with a different mm -hmm. group every day, okay. right? That's what they usually do in second and K-1? Mm-hmm. Okay. And some groups are visited more than, you know, like especially right. those bubble kids. Um, and the other thing I would say for third grade is think about if you can pinpoint what you're looking at, if you have those kids in RTI right. that are not tier two or tier three right. that's in a specific program, that's a perfect time yeah. to do your small group. Yeah. So for you all, you know, take advantage of that RTI time yeah. if you can. We kind of went through lesson two, which is our first um, partner read. Uh, we kind of you determined what we would document. use okay. as the one you were trying to open. Uh, okay. How we model it. Our worksheet will be created instead of just orally it's asking questions. So small group read, like, two t reading it two times it would be mm -hmm. good. So nothing has to get glanced. When you click on it, it need to be. So my question. I am, like, when I was working on my small group, my other kids can read through it twice. It just reminds us that we should But my other kids would not only kids do it one time, and it was like practice. going into math. So even with those Is that okay? Because they can't, I mean, there's no way they could do it twice. You may yeah, also no. do some isolation. I mean, they're like going to do what you're saying. Plus, you're doing a little more of that small group. I can be a little bit of context and a little bit more about what a reader it should look like. Either a text passage like you're talking about, or if you use the video, that would be your context, you know. So uh, this gives you a small group of small group Yes. Mm -hmm. no, uh, so are they I wanting those geos to be used during RTI? No, I mean, so a yeah. certain group. You know, just can you open you know, I can think of some mediums that would still help with those yeah. low yeah. students. So the one that just on, that on this page, okay. I yeah. had to ask for access on that one. I sent that to you. And then go down far. You don't want that to discourage on that actual document. Can you get it open now? And that's the thing to do is when you can switch up those partners. It's not like it's yeah. in, you know set in stone, but you have to leave them that way. Um, yeah, one that says tier one, group expectations. Yeah. A good start. And then while I was looking at like um, routines and stuff, and then I said no, it's level. So then I got this got my family support yes. there. Yes. They, they respond to seeing physically seeing the volume. And then the light switch, my kids know so if it's on, if they come to my table and they're in a small group. So we've got about, I think, five minutes. Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about your bring back. Um, second grade, if you'll work on that the students not with the teacher plan and bring that back um, next week and you guys go ahead and try to implement some of those next steps and yeah. then bring back a reflection on that um, and we're next week going to focus a little bit more on that small group that is at the table and what is expected um, and that uh, we had some parking lot hey, you would you uh, um, Mine said, is it okay like during partner reads if you pull a small group that for those that you know won't be able to read it even with a partner? Like, so you're saying like, like having not a low load that can't read the decodable at all? Then they may be echo reading. Okay. 
partner. So I mean, that's something you can try. And that's something that you're going to model when you're modeling that partner protocol. So that might be something to try. And if it doesn't work, then you try something else. But even an echo, it might be a sentence at a time. Because um, it, if it's a higher reader, they're still going to be able to comprehend even though they're doing it a sentence okay. at a time. So just think about putting that low, if they're that low and can't read, with a high student. Anything else jumps out of here? I appreciate you guys coming in with all the materials today and ready to go. Um, so, 